What's cracking? What's popping? What's happening, YouTube fam? Mm, it is so good to see y'all. I apologize. I've been gone for a minute, but back like we never left. Let's get to it. So today's video, you can see by the title, it's going to be basically my experience as a brand new blue belt. And so I'm very excited to do this video because I know a lot of y'all may be struggling, may need some advice or some tips. Maybe you want Maybe you want to get into jujitsu, maybe you're in jujitsu, maybe you're a brand new blue belt just like me. So I just want to give you all some exhortation, motivation, encouragement, and uh, give you all some of my experience. So really quick, I've got a small list of some things that I wrote down of what I want to help you all with. Basically, that is that is a part of my journey and what I've been through, what I've experienced and learned. So I hope you all stay tuned in for this video. This is going to be really enjoyable for me because uh, jujitsu is one of my passions and I want to share this with you all. So I hope you all stay tuned in. Let's get to it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is in jujitsu, you have to have consistency. I know, I know, I know it seems cliche. You hear it from everybody and their brother. But realistically, if you're going to do jiu-jitsu, you do have to be consistent. And I think some people get that consistency, the definition of it, misconstrued. They think that going once a week or twice a week for a year or two years is enough. I think that's okay, but I, I do disagree with that being consistency. I mean, it, it is in a manner, but if I'm talking about for maximal growth and if you really want to hone in on your craft and your hobby and be become very good at what you're doing you do have to focus in on what you're doing and be dialed in and consistent so to me three three days minimum on the mats i believe that's what you need I try to get four to five days in just because look it's a passion of mine i enjoy it i really do enjoy it so you have to come in every single day willing to learn right you have to be willing to learn you have to come in and be willing to ask questions so this i'm just going through the list and i'll i'll break it down a little bit more you have to be able to remain consistent don't give up humble yourself okay be safe ask questions have good hygiene that's a huge one look we don't want to roll around with dirty stinky smelly gee people. That's just how it is. Look, we, I don't know why I just dived into this, but hygiene is huge because it's not just about you. It's about the caring about the people that you're training with in your academy or your dojo affiliation, whatever. It's, it's called respect. Taking care of yourself, cleaning yourself, brushing your teeth. Man, look, bad breath. Nobody's going to want to train with you if you have bad breath, okay? Brushing your teeth, wearing deodorant, washing your gi after every single class. Look, you also, you have to humble yourself. You absolutely have to humble yourself. If you go around with an ego, right? Look, especially as a white belt. How do I say this? You are going to get taught a lesson by everybody in there. Whether somebody is twice your size, half your size, uh, a different sex than you are, you're gonna get humbled. That's the way of jujitsu, right? Jujitsu is meant to, so that you can defend yourself from a bigger, stronger attacker. And people who have more time on the mats, they're gonna be able to handle you. And that's just the way that it is. So you have to come in with a humble mindset of wanting to learn and wanting to listen and wanting to ask questions, not walking around and peacocking everybody, acting like you can beat everybody up. Because look, I promise you can't. I mean, you could be a brown belt or a black belt and still get thrown all over the mat, okay? Another thing, you cannot give up. If you give up, obviously you're done, but you'll never continue to grow. And that's with anything in life. You cannot give up. You have to always continue to, to pursue greatness and to be persistent, right? And be relentless in what you're going after. So you can't give up, right? You have to come in day in and day out, take care of yourself. And it has to come from within. You really do have to want this. This is a journey. It is not a sprint. This is a lifetime thing for a lot of people. If you are going in with a mindset that I want to learn as much as I can in a year or two and then be done, sadly you may not survive, right? This is a this is a, a mindset. It's something that comes from within here and within here. And you have to really want to get better. You have to really want to be around people who are pursuing greatness and, and want to become better as well. So you can't give up. Look, even we talked about this earlier. Even if you do come in once or twice a week over the the span of a week or a month, at least you're 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 doing something. You know, you're not just 
being lazy and not going because of whatever the case may be. So look, don't give up, okay? Continue to pursue greatness. Continue to come in every single day and be willing to learn. All right, I was jumping around a little bit, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to uh, dial it in and be more focused from now on. So asking questions, right? That is something that I think most people do not do nowadays. I notice I roll with a lot of people, whether I tap them out or whether they tap me out. I notice when I'm being prideful, when I'm, when I'm being egotistical, they tap me out. Okay, let's move to the next thing. You good, man? You want to you wanna learn that? No, I'm good. I'm telling you, with anything in life, you have to ask questions and you have to be willing to learn. You have to. I don't really understand the motto or, or the, uh, the mindset, rather, of coming in getting tapped out or maybe not understanding something fully and being prideful and egotistical. And instead of asking a question and learning, you just move on and you only have an inkling of an understanding of what the move is or how it's supposed to be set up. Whatever the case is, look, we have to get to the point where we are willing to ask questions. Even if you have to annoy somebody with the, with the questions, do it. Because eventually somebody is going to see you who's more experienced and has the same passion as you do. And they're going to be willing to, to sit you down, roll with you and spar or whatever, and show you and teach you the moves. That is how I grow, is by asking questions. So I'll never understand people who don't ask questions and, and want to continuously grow, right? Don't be afraid to ask questions either. You're not going to look stupid. You're not going to look dumb. People, people who have been where you're at are going to want to help you. And look, I'm just a blue belt, right? I'm... I'm brand new on this, so for me, it's definitely a huge thing because I have just passed white belt, right? I'm still in my beginner stages of jujitsu, and it's like like we said earlier, it's a lifelong commitment, and you have to be willing to ask questions all the way throughout your journey. And when you hit black belt, you're still you're probably gonna have more questions than you did before, honestly. So being willing to learn, that's really, what it, that's really what it comes down to, asking questions. You have to have the mindset and the mentality of a life learner in everything that you do, but really in jujitsu, because there's so many techniques and so many things to learn and so many different adjustments and ways to learn things and execute them that if you don't ask questions, you're, you're gonna have a very linear state of mind in your game and in your jujitsu. So just be willing to learn ask questions you're not going to be looked at as dumb or stupid actually people might even respect you more if you're willing to ask questions and i, I wholeheartedly believe that your jujitsu game is going to be dramatically elevated when you continue to ask questions consistently next topic is going to be about safety this is something that i think is paramount in having a long-lasting jujitsu career so something, one thing that I've noticed specifically with the older heads, we call them old heads or the OGs, whatever you want to call them, notice a lot of them have injuries. If not all of them have injuries because I think back in the day it was more common to just brawl and just head to head, you know, two, two monsters going at it and basically trying to prove yourself, prove your worth and your toughness, which I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with that, but logistically and from a practicality standpoint that's not really going to do you well for long a longevity in your career of jiu-jitsu i think that you have to find yourself a gym academy whatever that's safe and where people really care about your safety and care about your health and are not trying to destroy you every time you come into class now look by all means if that's what you're into and you want that intensity and you're a fighter go to that gym, go to that competition gym, uh, go to that MMA school. That's great. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. Go do you, right? Me, I'm talking about the people who really care about their safety and have jobs that they can't afford to really be getting hurt. Um, so my advice would be you have to have discernment. When you walk in the place, if it seems a very competitive, aggressive, egotistical gym, may not be for you, right? Find another one. So it may even take you the free trial or a few weeks to get to know if that's the place that you should be at. And that's okay. Don't feel bad that you go in and you try out a gym and then you leave because you don't like it. Look, it's your life because something that one of my instructors says is I'm number one in, in the academy, right? Because I've got a life outside this. I can't afford to be getting hurt. I can't get my arm broke or my leg broke or my ankle broke for you. 
You know what I'm saying? Really, you should be around people who want to be safe, right? Because when I roll with people, I may lock up a move, an ankle lock, or a heel hook or something, and I'm just, I'm making eye contact. I'm not squeezing, I'm not ripping or yanking anything. I'll just make eye contact with them and let them go. If I get, in, if I get into a position trying to escape or trying to do something and I feel like there's a possibility of me getting hurt, I'm gonna let you have it because it's not worth me getting hurt and being out of the gym for months or years at a time or worse, like I've seen, people never coming back. So I definitely think that safety, you have to find a place where people want to keep you safe and you should wanna keep other people safe. Right, because jujitsu is it's the gentle art. That's what jujitsu translates to. It's the gentle art, but it is also very dangerous, especially if you're not careful or you're going with somebody who has ill intent or they don't really care about your your safety and your health. So safety is a huge, huge topic, and I definitely think that it's paramount because you can be a beast. You can you can be training all the time and be humble. And this list that we're going through, you can have all of those things, but. If you don't have safety, your jujitsu is, your career is going to be done, period. So find those people that care about you. Find those people that want to be safe, that strive for safety. And find a school where your instructor um, really promotes safety and promotes being careful about everything that you're doing. So definitely it's a huge topic. Let's move on. Okay, y'all. So for the most part, that top half of the list that, I'm, that I was just uh, naming out, those are more etiquette things, moral things, and for your longevity. So this bottom half that I'm getting into is going to be more of the tactical side of things. So positioning, timing, and escapes. For me as a blue belt, I understand I have a lot more to learn. I am just getting started. As a brand new blue belt, one of the main things that I am learning is that positioning, if you don't have positioning, you're never gonna get submissions. If you don't have timing, you won't properly be able to set up your submissions and you'll be your momentum is going to be all over the place you're going to be able to get reversed you're just going to be all over the place and then your your escapes if you're a blue belt and you're getting stuck in the mount or you're getting stuck in side control modified mount whatever the case is and you legitimately cannot get out that's a problem I think as a blue belt, you should be able to proficiently escape every position. And now maybe not escape and go straight into a submission or, or something spectacular. Definitely think as a blue belt, you should be proficient enough in your mechanics to be able to get out of a position and get yourself in a more optimal position, right? So positioning, timing, and escapes. I think drilling, drilling the escapes is huge. Have, have a, a more experienced higher belt teach you the escapes or your instructor and train them over and over your, your, um, your hip outs or we call them your shrimps, your uh, side mount escapes, your trap and roll, your mount escapes, your elbow escapes, triangle escapes, posturing up, your arm bar escapes, the hitchhiker, your omoplata escapes, your choke escapes, getting your back on the ground, elevating your hips to go to the mount. These things are, are huge and I think that it takes repetition to build muscle memory so that you can resort to those things when you're really going at it, right? When you're really turning up the pace. So drilling is huge for escapes. Now positioning. Positioning I think comes from going with higher belts, people who are more experienced. Ask them to help you. If you get it submitted or um, you're going for a submission and something doesn't work out or they get the drop on you, just ask them, going back to asking questions, ask them, hey, was my positioning okay? Where, where should I have gone? Where was my weight? Where should it have been and where was it? Because a lot of times where your weight is, how you sprawl out, um, those are huge in your positioning. Positioning is huge for setting up submissions as well. If you have poor, um, if you have poor positioning, you could completely miss your submissions that you're attempting to go for. So definitely ask old heads, higher belts, more experienced people about how you can improve really all of these things. Um, now timing. Timing I think is tricky. Timing I think is the thing on this list that takes the most <laughs> fun intended time. So I think it takes reps 
reps and reps and reps, practice, practice coming in year after year. Timing is one of those things. It just takes time, and I'm not even trying to be funny. It, I think it takes the longest to learn. It's, it really is called mat time. I've noticed, I'm, I'm coming up on a year and a half, that I just feel smoother with how I'm moving. When I go to set up submissions, it just feels smoother. It's not as choppy. You know, granted, I'm not flow like water like Bruce Lee says, but it's a lot better than when I was a one stripe white belt. And I think that can, you continue to progress in your timing and how you, let's say somebody's going to the mount, your timing is going to be better after reps, reps, and years of experience going to the elbow escape. Or maybe you are setting up a triangle. Before, you would spaz out and really shoot it and try to clamp your legs down and then they would posture up versus proper timing is faking a submission, messing around with maybe the collar, uh, distracting them, and then boom, you shoot the triangle and it's a lot more successful. So timing, once again, is going to take repetition and continuous dedication to learn and basically just mat time. So uh, those things are, are very important. Positioning, timing, and escapes. All right, y'all, this video is a little bit longer than I intended. Actually, probably a lot longer than I intended, but I just wanted to cover everything that I've learned, basically. Cardio and stretching. Look, y'all, uh, I just finished my second tournament. I placed third. A lot of people were happy for me, excited for me. I am too, but should have been first. It's okay. I know people say would have, should have, could have, but really should have been first. But anyways, what I learned is that cardio Dude, if you don't have good cardio, you're going to be gassed. I don't care how skilled you are, how good your positioning, timing, and your escapes are, how much knowledge you have in jujitsu. If you don't have really good uh, cardio, you're going to gas out. And somebody's going to destroy you, whether it's a street fight or whether it's a tournament or just being in the gym with your friends. Stretching. If you have tight hips, tight core, tight hamstrings, it's going to be tough. You're going to get into some positions that are very, very uncomfortable and maybe could even get you injured. I always tell people the more flexible you are, the less susceptible you are to injury. So when you get in the gym, man, focus some time in on stretching. Hold the stretch 30 seconds to a minute and do it every single day. Because that, that muscle, if it's all cramped up, it has more of a chance of getting injured versus being relaxed and loose and being able to flow. Watching videos on the basics is huge, right? A lot of things that I have learned have been outside of my actual academy is watching videos, taking time into study to write notes. And when you watch the video, don't just watch it and skip past it. You're gonna forget it. When you watch a video, write it down. Whenever you get the time, practice that actual move or watch the video and then go into your academy or your gym and practice it. Ask somebody to help you so that you can practice it and get better, right? Another thing is filming your roles if possible. It took me probably over a year to start doing this. A visual person, when I played football, we had to watch film to learn, and I loved watching film. So as, I, as I've started to film my roles recently, you're able to visualize what's going on better. And you remember stuff because you're gonna have thousands of roles in your jiu-jitsu career, and being able to have a few of them that you can go back and look upon and really adjust and critique yourself. When you go in the next time to your next class, you're going to be, you're going to have something to work on. When you film something, there's going to be something that you are going to catch that you wouldn't have otherwise. So I definitely think it's, it's crucial, especially if you're a visual person like I am, having that footage that you can go back and watch and say, oh, okay, that's why this didn't work. Oh, okay, he got this move because I missed uh, my knee shield or I missed my scissor sweep or my momentum was all over the place or I had my back down in the butterfly guard and that's why I missed it. Little things like that, I think, you can really, really grow quickly if you film yourself. Now, if you're at a gym where you can't film, that's tough. That's really tough. All I can say, alternative, is really you're going to have to ask questions for, with the person that you're going with and ask them for help and ask them for advice on what you could have done better. Tournaments. We're almost done here, y'all. Tournaments. I've done two. I'm going to continue to do them. Look, you have to be safe. If you get put in a position where you don't feel like you can escape, tap out. I promise you it's not worth getting your arm broken, your leg, your knee. I have made it, I've made a pact with myself. If I get put in a submission hold, I'm going to try to escape one time. No more than twice, no more than twice. But for me, I'm going to try to escape one time and then I'm going to tap. I, there was a guy at the tournament that I had went with six months prior 
And at this most recent tournament, he got his leg broken because I guess he turned the wrong way. They are dangerous. Without a doubt, you must know that they are dangerous and people are coming after you. It's a fight, right? If you're not somebody who's been in fights before, just know that it's a huge thing. You're probably going to have an adrenaline dump on your first time, which I did. You're going to be completely exhausted. You're going to be scared. Nerves are going to be running. There's a bunch of people. If you're, if you're scared about getting hurt, maybe don't do tournaments. It's not for everybody. Now, my advice for people who are maybe young, athletic, want to test themselves and want the challenge, go do it. But my advice, you need a coach. You need to have food. You need to have plenty of liquids to hydrate yourself. You need to be stretched out. Don't, don't go into a, a tournament stiff and sore. You definitely need to have control of your breathing. And you definitely, I think you need to know your escapes. You need to know how to get out of certain holds. And uh, you have to be able to control your breathing, okay? That's the main thing I noticed. When I, I, I didn't control my breathing, I got exhausted. So I've, I've had a few, few submissions. I've gotten submitted a few times. Another thing, last thing with the tournaments. The point system... I don't like them. I understand them. I understand them and props to people who run the <laughs> run the point system, props to you. I don't do that. I like submissions. People are gonna go knee on belly, take your back, knee on belly, mount, uh, sweeps. They're all worth different points and if you go in there like me and you haven't trained for points, it's gonna be very difficult to beat people unless you can just straight out submit them. And there's a timer. So you need to know the rules. You need to know how long the, the actual time is for your rounds what you can and cannot do, what gives you points, how you can lose them, stalling. If, you, if you're just messing around, you're going to get called for stalling and lose points. So there's a lot, of, a lot of things that go into it, but as you practice it and get better, eventually you just go into the tournament and you're not thinking that much because you know the rules, you know that you need to breathe, you, you, you basically understand it better and you're going to be more comfortable. The more comfortable you are, the better that you're going to do, the, the more that you're going to be able to think. And lastly, with the tournaments, you need to have chains of movements that you're going to do. Say you go for a single leg takedown, you go to side mount, knee on belly, and you go to mount, and maybe you're going to shoot an arm triangle or an arm bar. Basically, things like that. You need to have a chain, one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is, a chain of movements that you can do together. Because if you go in there like I did the first time, you're going to be left in the dust, basically. You're going to be confused and basically you're really going to be just reacting. They're going to do something, then you're going to do something. If you have something set out, a chain of movements that you're going to do, a game plan, you're going to be so far ahead of the game. So if you can do a tournament, I think you should. If you don't like it, don't do it. If you love it, do it. Get yourself a coach. Be serious about it. Do what you can do to, to become better. I, I think it's, it's the closest thing to a real fight. You have to keep coming in. Guys, please come, keep coming in. Look, let me be, let me be level, y'all, and be real with y'all. There was a time about four or five months ago when I had joined in with uh, the more advanced people. Man, I was about this close to quitting. Seriously. Very, very close to quitting because I was getting beat up. All the time I felt like I wasn't learning I felt like I wasn't doing anything I wasn't getting any submissions uh, people that I thought I should be able to do better against was messing up was getting submitted choked out I was tired I was basically getting bullied and I would say that lasted about a month but I just kept saying man I, I won't be able to forgive myself if I quit just keep going don't stop maybe one day you'll get better and you'll start to figure it out and maybe this will go away. And eventually after a month, it did. I got better, things started clicking. I started getting smooth, started getting some submissions and it boosted my confidence. Your jujitsu journey is going to do this, right? You're gonna have peaks, you're gonna have the valleys. You're gonna have peaks, you're gonna have the valleys and then you're gonna have times where you're just here, coasting along, which is kind of where I'm at right now. I just hit a peak at a tournament did some good things and now I'm just kind of coasting along and then you hit a valley and then you go back up just understand that you're going to go up and down in your jiu-jitsu journey even after when I got my confidence finally I would say for about two or three months I just felt like I was in this rut all the way down here wasn't getting any better but little did I know the people that I would would go with would encourage me would tell me dude you're getting way better way better. I'm not able to submit you here or I only submitted you once or twice. Whether you realize it or not, when you come in and you feel like you're not doing enough, you are getting better. 
I promise you, if, if you're really focused on being better and, and attention to detail, being technical, you are getting better, I promise. So you are gonna have ups and downs in your jujitsu career. You have to enjoy it. Sometimes you're gonna be the hammer, sometimes you're gonna be the nail, just like Jocko says. You have to be willing to humble yourself. And I'm telling you, if you can continue to come in day in and day out and overcome and do the little things right, and be willing to fight back with adversity and overcome adversity. It's going to make your personal life, everything else that you do in life, so much better and so much easier. So keep coming in, keep continuing to fight, learn, listen, have good hygiene, right? Don't give up, humble yourself, be safe, ask questions, right? Positioning, timing, escapes, watch videos on the basics. Drill the basics over and over and over again. Cardio, run, burpees, get in the gym, stretch as often as you can. Film your rolls if you can. I'm telling you, it'll help you a lot. Try a tournament if you would like. Be safe, understand people are coming at you, full speed, coming in. So guys, I hope that helped y'all. I know that was a long video. Still watching, I just wanna say I appreciate y'all. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos. I just feel that fire in me, that passion once again to do more videos on YouTube. So I just want to say I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much. I'm praying for y'all. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video. The channel is about this far away from 300K views and 500 subscribers. Look, y'all, I'm so honored that y'all would take time to watch me. I give all the glory and praise to God. I want to say I love y'all and peace out. We'll be back with another video soon.